I want to introduce Rashad. Rashad has become a good friend of, of our families. He's, he, he transferred during his sophomore year to Liberty University. He was, um, he was drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2011, played five years as, as a successful NFL athlete before retiring in 2017. He won the 2017 Dancing with the Stars Mirror Globe Championship. My wife was his counselor during that time, telling him how to, the girl he was dancing with, he was kind of sweet on her, even though she was engaged. And so Becky was telling him the story about how when my dad was in college, my dad's roommate was engaged to my mom. And Becky explained to him that how my dad would say, whenever his roommate would write a letter to, to my mom back here in Virginia, they were in Missouri in college, dad said, I'll mail the letter for you. He never mailed any of them. And so, <laughs> so he, uh, he ended up getting a girl. And so Becky was telling Rashad about that. But Rashad just didn't, I don't know. He didn't step up. I don't know what happened. She married the other guy. But anyway, this year he's releasing his new book, The uh, If in Life. He's the founder of the National Rashad Jennings Foundation, which helps youth. And he's a proud, we're proud that he's an alumni of Liberty University. It's hard to believe that in just eight or 10 weeks, we're gonna have teams like, uh, Old Dominion playing here on campus um, on, so on September 1st, Army on September 8th. Nor no, they're playing, that's an away game. Norfolk State will be here, North Texas, New Mexico, New Mexico State, Troy, Idaho State, UMass, Virginia, Auburn, New Mexico State, again, twice next year. Syracuse the following year, Louisiana, Buffalo, Hampton, New Mexico, New Mexico State again. Maine, Rutgers, UMass, BYU, Virginia, New Mexico State. So we're stepping up to a whole new level. And when you guys get back, we need you to be there to cheer, to cheer the uh, team on. The, the new bleachers that are up in the air above the student section will actually, the, the seats will actually be in place for commencement in two weeks when President Carter's here. And we, uh, he's coming in, spending two days touring the campus. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. But we've got some exciting things happening, exciting things um, going forward. And we've had a wonderful semester. We were privileged to attend Billy Graham's funeral down in Charlotte and, and uh, spent time with the owners of Hobby Lobby and Chick-fil-A. And they're doing some things with Liberty now here, um, here in town. And we, we just, uh, we're just so grateful to God for all the blessings that he's bestowed on this university. And without further ado, I want to introduce and welcome to Liberty, Rashad Jennings. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, all right. How everybody doing? Good, good. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, I, from uh, listening to him, I feel like it'll be a, y'all probably want to ask me some questions, but we just going to get into some of this message. Is that all right? <laughs> So first of all, I want to say thank y'all so much for allowing me to come back here. I love coming back to my alma mater. This is where I'm at. This is where I'm from, born and raised in Forest, Virginia. Anybody ever spent time in Forest yet? Anybody live in Forest? Cool. So as I'm traveling the world, speaking, dancing, having fun, getting into acting, writing my book, and a lot of stuff, I always tell people where I'm from, and I say I'm from Forest, Virginia. And I tell them it's self-explanatory. Forest. Virginia. I grew up understanding animals before people. I'm still trying to figure out people, so y'all can help me out with that along the way. Uh, but first things first, I definitely want to take the time to thank President Jerry Falwell and his lovely First Lady, Becky, for allowing me to come and launch my book, The If in Life, and talk to y'all today. So thank y'all very much for allowing me to come. Now, unlike when I spoke a couple years ago at the commencement, Today, I'm going to try to be a little bit brief, all right, because I know everybody has to get back to box up their stuff and get ready for finals. And a shameless plug, I want to give enough time that after this, I can meet and greet and talk and sign and you guys can get my new book. Um, with that being said, I just want to start with saying that I had a, I had a thought a couple days ago, and I'm, I'm a type of guy that I always take 15 minutes out of the day and stop and I think critically. 
and it dawned on me and it occurred that people always are putting themselves in boxes, right? And I got to thinking if God wanted us to be made to live inside of a box that He, crea- he would have created our bodies in a 90 degree angle. If God wanted us to live in man-made boxes, He would have created us in 90 degree angles. So with that in mind, I'm going to speak to you guys and girls today about how to live outside of the box. But not only just live outside of the box, I want to explain to y'all when there actually is times to dismantle a box. So first, I want to say a couple of things about a square. A square, of course, is a geometric shape that is made up of four 90-degree angles. But I want you to think about it as a box. And as I go through some of my specific points today, I want to show you how to dismantle it. So boxes are not typically and ordinarily your enemies. Boxes do have their purposes. Life needs to have some type of structure. Life needs to have some type of balance. Otherwise, you'll just have chaos everywhere. Now, again, the primary box has situations and is ter- tip- temporary situations to have a box. For prime example, how many of you guys are graduating this year? Perfect. Okay. So how many of y'all are actually going to box up some stuff and get ready to ship it? Nobody yet. Cool. That means you're still engaged. <laughs> so with that in mind, there will become a time when you're ready to box up everything that you have and ship it somewhere else. Now that box is good because it's temporary. It's getting you from point A to point B. Or you may have a package that somebody sent to you. Has your parents ever sent you a box of goodies? Okay, so you might get shipped a box of goodies full of your grandma's or your mom's or your brother's favorite cookies, and you can't wait to tear them things up. Or you might get boxed uh, an Xbox. And I know some guys in here probably play Xbox. Let me hear some noise if you play Xbox. So sometimes things come in good packages that's in a box. But also there's such things as invisible boxes. For example, when a child enters into the world, he doesn't realize it, but he's boxed in by his parents because the baby cannot change, wash, or feed, or dress himself. The parents have to keep the kid boxed in, so to speak. That's a very little box that gives that child little room to maneuver, but that is good for a period in time. Now, as the child grows, it continues to grow the box that he lives in. Why? Because the child can begin to do more things. He can crawl, he can walk, and long enough, the box expands where they have the freedom to go to the bathroom by themselves, hopefully. And then also they can dress themselves, as long as it's not in the dark, and go to school like some people do. And perhaps they can play in the backyard unattended. And the next stage that the box continues to grow is when the child gets an opportunity to go freely and stroll around the neighborhood for free. His expansion keeps growing. Year by year by year, his box keeps getting bigger. And opportunities are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but he's still in the box because he's still under the roof of his parents. Now, there are certain cases as a teenager where our box has a limitation that we still probably press too much. And as a lot of us are probably owe our parents an apology for how we press the box that they put us in. Now, everybody that's out here is an adult. And where you are standing today, that box that you live in is much bigger than any box that you lived in before. But don't kid yourself. You still are in a box today. That box is called the Liberty Way. And some of you, the box that you you need to be called in is the L-U-P-D. And some of you, probably are in the dean's box. So don't, oh, it got quiet. Don't act like I didn't go here. I know what the dean box is about, getting all them reps. Has anybody ever had any reps? I don't know if you're supposed to be excited and cheer for that. You just raise your hand. 
But that's a box. You're in the dean's box. You're under some rule, regulation, and restrictions. All right? Now, as you prepare to head out into the world, I want you to know that there's going to be all sorts of boxes that you might find yourself in. The major influences of your life will determine the size of box that you live in. Your job, your income, your friendship, the size of your family, whether you're married or single, the degree that you leave Liberty University with, and other many things will factor the way that you establish your box. That is great only for a limited amount of time. So yes, you do want to think outside the box, but that's not all. I also want you to learn to think your way out of boxes that you should not be in. But again, that's not all. I want you to also learn that there are often times where you need to dismantle a box. Dismantling a box is so you will not be tempted to return to it once life gets tough. Now life is going to get tough, and I've had plenty of situations where life has been tough for me. I was a short, overweight, chubby kid with glasses and asthma. I had a .6 GPA average at one point in time. Fifth string running back that said that I want to play in the National Football League. There's no way possible, any way at all, that I should be standing in front of you men and women giving y'all a testimony and story. My box was very limited. And I always had to be prepared for an opportunity to come my way. Now, because I've been in you guys' shoes before, I've sat in, I've sat in convocation, I've, I've been to this university, I've played football here, I graduated, I've gone on, I played professionally for eight years, I've retired, and now here's where I'm at today as I'm pursuing a lot of different things in Hollywood. So I'm not unreachable, I'm not untouchable, I'm coming back to you humbly as I know how, sharing some of my stories. And let me fast forward from childhood to here and show you a box that I used to be in. As I was a fifth string running back, that means fifth string, literally fifth string. I'm talking about we only had four running backs on the team. The coach just said, we're going to give you fifth string just to shut you up. I never played. So we're playing against our high school rival, and it's the last game of the season. I'm going to, at this time, I'm at Jefferson Forest High School, right? Okay, I heard some years in there. I'm at Jefferson Forest High School, and we're playing against our rival, the Brookville Bees. So we got some bees out here. So from this, we go out, we get ready, come out to the game. Now, when I tell y'all I never played, we come out of the tunnel, we break the white tape, and as I come out to the side, I take off my helmet, and I always put the helmet down on the ground somewhere. Why? Because I never played. And there was me and another buddy of mine, his name was Speedy. He didn't earn the name, he was very slow. So he was not good, and I was not good apparently to most people. So me and him were set on the sideline, I literally, <laughs> you're, supposed to put, you're supposed to put M&Ms in your thigh pads. Right? So I would, I mean, excuse me, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to put thigh pads where your thigh pads is. I would put M&M candy, Sprites, all kind of goodies, because I know I never played. So I would reach in here and grab out my M&Ms, grab out my Sprite, start eating it, and drinking and watching the show. Now again, we're playing against a high school rival. You got to imagine me, this overweight, chubby kid, these big red rim glasses, just sitting on the sideline, wishing that I could play. Now through, through this, through this, this story is actually pretty funny. So me and Speedy are sitting right here with each other. High school rival. We have no chance to go to the playoffs. We're done. Last game of the season. If that team beats us, they get to go to the playoffs. So it's like our Super Bowl. So I'm sitting on the sideline, kick off, we get the ball. Now that was a Tennessee scout up at the top just to watch our, our starting running back because he was really good. His name was Quincy Freeman. He could go play at the next level. So I'm sitting on the sideline, first play, we have the ball, me and Speedy sitting here, watching. He gets hurt the very first play. Speedy taps me on my shoulder, hey man, you think you're going to play? I'm like, nah man, they ain't, they ain't going to play me. <laughs> Coach puts in the second string running back. He goes out there, two plays later, he gets hurt. Speedy, hey man, you think they're going to play you? 
Like, nah, man, they ain't gonna play me. <laughs> Third string running back, he goes out. He gets hurt. Speedy. Hey, man, you think you're gonna play? I'm like, man, if you don't get out of here, man, nah, they ain't gonna play me. Eaton, still watching. Fourth string goes in. He gets hurt. Now, Grant, now right here, I'm nervous, I'm scared, because I'm, I want to play. I've never played at this point, ever. So part of me is like, yeah, 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 put me in. And part of me is like, nah, 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 don't put me in, I might go in there and mess up. <laughs> now they put back in the first string running back because he had taped up his ankle. So I'm cheering for him like, yeah, man, come on, go out there, do it, do it, do it. Because I don't really want to go in, but I do. He gets hurt again, he comes back out. Now the coach is scrambling, I'm next. Fifth Street running back. Speedy's over here. Hey, man, they're going to put you in. I'm sitting here. I'm like, man, if you don't get off me. So they put in, the coach is literally looking around. He catches eye contact with me, and he puts in a receiver to go play running back instead of me. Half of me is like, dang. The other half of me is like, yes. I know I have to go in. Kid you not, he gets hurt. This is incredible. This is all documented. This is a very true story. He then, the coach has no choice to put, to put me in, right? So he's, he's screaming at me, Jennings, get in the game, get in the game. And I'm like, uh, uh, I'm scrounging around. I got M&Ms in my hand. I look, I find a helmet. It's not mine. I put it on. The helmet's way too big and loose. I don't put it in their mouthpiece because that would have been disgusting. I go in. Now, a huddle's full of 11 people. Right? So I, I finish it. There's 10 people. I come in. I'm the 11th. And I said, I'm like, hey guys, what's up? They look at me, Mr. Rashad, what you doing in here? I said, everybody hurt, man. We got to go. Let's go. <laughs> they call the play. The very first play, I step back. I get in my position. Now the quarterback's going through the cadence. Blue 80. Blue. And I'm like, I'm yelling at him. I'm like, hey, hey. Said, huh? He opens up. I get the ball, I'm nervous, I'm like got all this loose energy, I make one person miss, I score a 40-yard touchdown. Now at this point, you can't tell me nothing. I throw that ball in the air somewhere, I'm doing some crazy weird dance, the referee throws a flag, it's all bad, I run back to the sideline, I chest bump, speedy, he falls on the ground, I pick him up, like man, get your tail up. We're having the time of our life. Again, they put back in the third string running back because he got healed up. About a quarter goes through, they put me back in. They say, Jennings, get in the game. Four plays later, another touchdown on offense. So I'm, my mind is blown. I go into halftime, I come back out. When we come back out of halftime, it was a similar situation on defense where guys were getting hurt left and right. They say, Jennings, put, put Rashad in the game. I mean, they say, Coach, put Jennings in the game. They put me in on defense. I come off the very first play, defense in. Said, Hike. Hey, Make the uh, tackle miss. I tackle the quarterback. He fumbles. I pick up the ball. I scoop and I score. Third touchdown. Now it's 20. Now in the fourth quarter, it's 24 to 21. They're winning. All they have to do is run the clock out. We're playing defense. They run the football. We call a timeout. They run the football. We call a timeout. They run one more play. We call a timeout. It's fourth. It's fourth down. All they have, thing they have to do is punt the ball and hope that we don't score. Fourth down, they got a greedy and said, we're going to go for it. They decide to run a screen play. I'm playing defensive end. I come off the edge, and I sniff a screen play. So the quarterback tosses the ball in the air. I don't know why, but I picked it. I don't know why the quarterback threw the ball. I picked it, and I score. Walk off touchdown. I score four touchdowns, two on offense, two on defense. We win the game, right? After that game, after that game, that Tennessee— After that game, that Tennessee scout came up to me and said, Rashad, I came to watch the starting running back, but I couldn't help but to notice you. He said, Rashad, how are your grades? <laughs> I held my head down. I said, well, I got a .6. He said, .6? You got to try to do something like that. <laughs> and I. <laughs> He said, Rashad, you have potential. And for the first time in my life, outside of the people that are going to support me no matter what, somebody saw potential in me. 
From there, I have two older brothers. They invested in me. They transferred, I mean, they, they are 10 and 13 years older than me. I was the whoops, here we go again, baby. Now, my brothers decided to take head coach, I mean, a coaching job at Lynchburg Christian Academy at the time, which is now Liberty Christian Academy. They coached there for free to pay half a tuition for me to transfer there. My parents took a loan against the house to pay the other half a tuition. I went to Lynchburg Christian Academy. I repeated my junior year. I took nine homeschool classes, nine summer school classes, on top of the regular academics. And I never made any excuses. I never blamed anybody. I completely turned my life and did a 180. Now, through that, because that was nothing but God. <laughs> through that, there is a box that I had to break out of in order to dismantle it and become the person and find the positions that I found myself in today. So with that being said, I want to put up a box and I want to show y'all how we're going to dismantle this box. Oh, there we go. We got this right here. So first things first. This is a box and at me, I'm in a group text with a bunch of my boys. And we always, when somebody says something, they start making excuses, we just text CTS. It stands for cut the stuff. <laughs> cut the stuff. That's what it stands for. Y'all understand? So the first thing we're going to do to dismantle a box, because there's six sides to a box, we're just going to CTS and straight cut out the very front because we're not going to be fronting. So we're going to drop the box and cut out the very beginning of it. It's going to be simple. We're going to get through this real quick how to dismantle a box. So now when you open up the box, there's somebody in it. That somebody is you. That somebody is you. We already CTS. We're going to stop fronting. All right. Now that we CTS, we're going to cut out the back real quick because there's no backing out. We're going to stand in this fire and learn how to dismantle this box so there's no backing out. We're going to just break down the back. Now at this point, we knocked out two of the sides of the box. Now you may ask yourself, well, if the front's open, the back's open, why doesn't he just simply walk out of the box? Nope. Because that'd be too easy. And because it's so easy, you're never going to learn to stick around and dismantle the box because you can come back to that once life gets tough, when it starts to rain, when it starts to pour, you're going to want to hide. So we're going to actually stick in this and learn to dismantle the box. We're going to deal with four sides of the box that are often known to keep us from pursuing our dreams, and they also keep us confined in fear and mediocrity. Now for the remaining sides of this box, the most important one to break down first is the top one. Why? Because above all else, nothing is more important than the relationship you have with Jesus Christ. Remember the name Joseph means Jehovah has added. God already knows what he has put within you. God knows your talents, your gifts, and your purpose. It's important to remove the top of the box so there's a direct connection between you and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So next box that we're going to dismantle is the left side. The left side of the box represents people, places, and things that should be left behind. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, flee temptation and youthful lust, and pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, and those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. Removing the left side of the box is not on purpose of going in that particular direction. We are dismantling the box, not just trying to think outside of it. Like I said before, dismantling the box so you will not be able to return to it. We want to keep moving forward because we realize that the Lord has no pleasure in the soul that draws back or retreats. Again, the left side represents the things that we are leaving behind. 
So far, if we in agreement with breaking down this box, how we doing it? Let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. If we're in agreement, let me hear you say, woo. Yeah. So the next thing we have to break down is the right side of the box. So the right side of the box stands for making the righteous decisions, making the right choices. And when you get to a fork in the road, there, here's a little bit of advice for you. Always go right, because in a fallen world, there's nothing left to do wrong. It has all been tried. It is all old as time is known. It is tired and useless. So try something new and be a rebel and be righteous. The next side of the box that's only left is the bottom line. And when you make it past the bottom line, you learn how to score. And in life, I've learned quickly that football never was my true touchdown. My true touchdown is when I understood who Jesus Christ was in my life. And I want to encourage every guy, every girl in here, every man, every woman, every child, every voice, that literally no matter what you decide to do in life, if you keep God first and you keep chasing Him and you keep pursuing Him, He will always show up in the midst of everything. And one piece of advice that I heard along the way that, that's really helped me uh, amongst many is learning where to keep your essentials. So I'm going to leave you with this thought, and I challenge everybody to do this. Before you go to sleep at night, if you're able to, whatever you need, the essentials for the next day, put it under your bed. If you can, if while you're charging your phone, charge your phone and put your phone under your bed. If you can, put your keys underneath your bed. If you can, put your homework underneath your bed. And if you ask why, it's because the first thing every single morning you're forced to do is get on your knees. And if you remember to do that, God will take care of the rest. I appreciate y'all Let me share some time with y'all. And please pick up the infant life. Thank you, Rashad. And he needs to be on his knees because he still doesn't have a woman. You guys, <laughs> don't just come say hey to Caroline. Come say to him too. But anyway, there's two, I mentioned Scott Lamb, Greg Dowell. We're so glad to have them on board. I forgot to mention two other family members I got here. All those projects I showed you earlier, my son Trey has been doing a great job managing, keeping the construction moving. And his wife Sarah, is she's, she's heading up the career center to help you guys get jobs and she's taking it to a whole new level. And so I just want to recognize, both of you guys stand up. Yeah. You see Caroline, he got his wife at Liberty. Okay, you need to remember that. All right, I promised you I'd show you that 400-pound fish, so I'm going to do it real quick. Come on. Uh, the, no, that's not the right one. That's the sailfish. All right, that's the big one. All right, quick, 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 quick. That's enough. That's enough. All right, okay, okay. The sailfish, Sam Stone caught that. Sam, where are you? Stand up, Sam. That fish weighed more than he did. There he is. Okay. All right, this, uh, David's got... A football. What are you going to do, David? Well, we have, uh, we have a dozen footballs, and we've asked Buckshot. Come on, our starting quarterback. Come on, give it up for him. And we've asked Rashad, and we've asked President Falwell to each throw. We are. We, we're, we're going to throw the footballs out to you. They're going to throw the footballs uh, all around here. And if you get a football, bring it up to us. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you a brand new copy, a pre-release of the F in life. And so we have a copy of that for you. As soon as Convo's over, two opportunities today to meet Rashad, get a book, a pre-release copy of the book, go ahead and get it signed by him, uh, get it, you know, so it's going to be an incredible gift. Make sure you come and support our brother. And I forgot to mention, Daryl Strawberry actually started his career at Lynch, he played for the Lynchburg Mets before he went on 1981. I, I remember that well, shows you how old I am. But anyway, who's going to throw the football first? All right, hey, won't you guys stand up real quick? And again, if you catch a ball, 
bring it up to the front towards the sound deck right there, all right? Just bring it over to that blue tarp over there. Come on, Buckshot. Nice. Let me see who we got. Uh, is this on? Awesome. Hey, can we turn can we turn this mic on? Turn Rashad's mic on. All right, who got some, who got some hands? Where the hands at? All right, here you go. Hey, throw it. Throw it. Throw it like when you played Baylor. Hey, everybody, we beat Baylor, by the way. We beat Baylor. All right, President Falwell. Go long. Go long. Come on. Last one, you guys ready? Come on, Buckshot. Let's do it, ready? Three, two, one! Nice. All right, hey, bring those footballs up here. Left stage and we'll give you a copy of the book. God bless you guys. Go to the two book signings immediately after this and then later tonight. We love you. Great year. God bless you. Get out of here.